We ventured into Rivington, expecting a place of solace and rest. Instead, we found the blight of corruption and greed had taken its hold. Much to my disdain, we visited a circus, from thieving gin swindling gold from the masses, to a clown replaced by a doppelganger. There is little joy to be found here. Gods, I hate clowns. I'm not even sure clowns like clowns. The flaming fists have preyed upon the refugees, and even the vigilant Gur have called for our help. We should not ignore a single plea. These doppelgangers operate under the guidance of Orin, I'm sure. Paranoia and suspicion have crept upon the camp. None mention it, but I feel their unease. I do not blame them. Even in the Open Hand Temple, we found a place fraught with murder. Now we near Worm's Rock. Courage will be our shield, and retribution our blade. We just wanted to go to bed for one night, and look who it is. Queen Vlacketh. You are a Sherlock, and still you speak my name. I've seen the captive Orpheus with my own eyes, spoken to Shestil Kithrak Vos. You lied to us, enslaved us. The betrayer Vos lies! I have only a moment, and you, a Sherlock, will listen. We are Githyanki. We move mountains. We snuff out stars. We shake the plains. The traitor Voss has lied to you. The heretic prince would shatter us in an instant. The great dominion shrunk to the head of a pin. Can this be true? Is the Githyanki prince really a threat to his own people? Or simply a challenge to Vlacketh's rule? Return to the astral prism! Slay Orpheus the Pretender! Serve me, and I will ascend you. You will be no mere warrior, nor Kithrak. You will be Barta Vlacketh. Commander of Dragons, my only, my chosen. A final chance. Kneel before me, make your promise. Lazel's thoughts become yours. The sight of Orpheus looms over her mind. Voss's words echo within it. She means to forever turn her back on Vlacketh. Andrew Hill's not here to convince her to do anything. She knows what she needs to do. She understands completely. The Queen, she's loud. She's incredibly demanding, and there's no reason to trust her. She brought the vinegar. Now she offers honey? It's a bit too late. Andrew Hill's gonna stay quiet. I gave you my faith, and you called me traitor. I gave you my life, and you ordered your knights to hunt me! I have witnessed too much, and you have given me too little. Finally, I can see. Orpheus will live, and I will hear his creed. This is my word! Your word is nothing! You are nothing! The Kithraki will bring you. I will tear your flesh from your bones and devour your skull's marrow while you beg for death. I will consume you. I will unmake you. We're not going to sleep well tonight, are we? Let's talk to Lazelle. It is done. There is no going back. As long as the Undying Queen reigns, I am never to soar unbound over the Astral Sea, never to cross the One in the Void. As it should be. Better a short life built on truth than immortality woven of lies. Better to unite the Githyanki under a prince who would free their minds and honor their bodies. So why do I feel so bitter? That's a pretty easy one, I think. Let's use an inside skill check. 
Consider Lazel's past and present. What is the true source of her resentment? A DC of only 10 to be. A 20. Vlakith has upended Lazel's whole existence. Everything she knew to be true, every plan and aspiration she ever held has been painfully ripped away. Lazel's bitterness is born of sadness. She is mourning the loss of the person she once was and can never be again. That's what it is. She's lost it all. You're grieving the future you'll never have. Blackith took everything from you. How well you've come to know me. But in truth, she didn't take everything. I have what I have gathered for myself. I'm more to a new regent, a new land, and new allies. Vlakith cannot unmake she who no longer exists. And so, from the old battle cries is birthed another. Tremar Sala Orpheus must still now forge an Inyeri. Orpheus's will above all. May the comet blaze my path forward. I hope so. You've been quick to pledge yourself to Orpheus's cause. What about your own needs and wants? Orpheus's freedom is my want and my need. To deny his freedom would be to deny my own. There will come a time when I can think about myself beyond the Lich Queen who enslaves the Githyanki and the Prince who would liberate them. But that time won't come until the Prince of the Comet flies again. She promised to make you bought to Vlakith. Sounds impressive. Vlakith's left hand and her right. Commander of all dragons, chosen of the Queen Regent. Not since Vlakith won has a Bart to Vlakith been anointed. <sighs> Another empty promise. Only a naive fool would believe otherwise. The kind of fool I was not so long ago. What next? We find Voss at Charesse's caress and retrieve the key to releasing the prince. Orpheus Tufki Narsin. We know what we need to do, I understand. Let's go talk to Karlak now. <sighs> Soldier, my engine. It hurts. I think this might be it. Soon. Things burning hotter than I knew it could. But look, we've just about made it to the city. That'll do me. Let's go protect it. <sighs> Whatever happens after that is between me and the so-called gods. I hope we're able to help her out. She is such a cheerful spirit, a great companion, a good friend, and here she is suffering. To survive, she would need to go back to the house. She doesn't want to go back. She wants to be here, but she cannot. You don't think we'll find you a cure? With this heat going, I can't spare the energy to think. Ugh. I just want to enjoy whatever's left of this life of mine. <laughs> anyway, it could be worse. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, with who I'm meant to be with. How many people can say that? That's true and fair. Let's go to bed. Let's have one good night of rest. We had a queen visit us. We've learned more grim news about our dear friend Karlak. Now, we just need to sleep. After that, we're going to investigate a bit around Worms Crossing. Then afterwards, we'll go into Worms Crossing. Let's go. You can't just let one pouting go to bed, huh, Emperor? Want to have a conversation? Fine, we'll have a conversation. He's pouting. How did you? Oh, it's you. I must have let my mind wander. Enough for you to wander in. Forgive me. I am drained. Ever since you killed Catherick and took his netherstone, the Chosen's control of the brain has been brittle. It's rebelling against Orin and Gortash. Fiercely. I suspected that when we took Catherick's stone, the brain would begin to break free. Those brain quakes confirm that my suspicion was correct. 
I do not know what happens now when it receives their orders. And I do not dare guess. You feel the Emperor's fear as if it were your own. An Elder Brain enslaved is one thing. An Elder Brain unleashed will be the end of everything. Beautiful, isn't it? The mighty Prince Orpheus, contained in submissive slumber. Come. You may as well sit a while, now that you are here. Your company isn't unwelcome. I believe that. But why would that be beautiful to me? If it wasn't for our current condition, we would free him right away. You do seem troubled. An accurate summary. I have found myself distracted of late. I'm haunted by memories. They are relentless. I can think of nothing. No one else. Who do you think of? Duke Stelmane, or Belin, as I knew her. I wasn't ready for her death. You thought you were my first ally. Far from it. I have long sought the allyship of others. It is the only way to succeed. Though my relationship with Berlin was different from my relationship with you. There's an issue here. The Mind Flayer to me is a great manipulator. Does he actually see any of us as friends? No, we're more likely to be tools. Is he here to aid us all? Or is he here to be like an animal, seeking preservation, wanting to survive? We shall see in time. Andrew has a pretty good idea. But he's going to ask, was it more intimate? In a way, but not the way you're thinking of. In life, she was my business partner, back when we ran the Knights of the Shield. A difficult task for a mind flayer. Duke Stelmane trusted me, and the city trusted her. I concede the plot, but Berlin took center stage. It was she who met with the merchants, politicians, and patriarchs. It was she who negotiated deals and signed off on agreements. Her rooms played host to the most important conversations in the city. Together, we brought order to chaos. At its height, everything that happened in that city went through the shield. Through us. I could not have done any of it without her. Just as I cannot do any of this without you. But now, she is gone. That is very shocking. We could be mean, could be cruel. We'll find a middle ground. If I didn't know you were a mind flayer, I would say you were upset. Astute as ever. You think that mind flayers are soulless husks who feel nothing. Berlin thought the same at first. You are wrong. Feeling is vital to the pursuit of anyone's goals, even a mind flayer's. Like you, mind flayers no fear. Like you, we crave recognition. But unlike you, unlike the others of my kind, I am no slave to either. My end is and always has been freedom. Berlin understood this. Berlin became my freedom. I'm sure. That was insightful. I am glad you were able to learn something. Another quake. The brain is rebelling again. I need to focus. You should. Let's go back to town. That steel watcher has over 400 HP. There's only one of them here. It's level 11. We're not going into Worms Crossing Outraged. just yet. Instead, Jahira, Lizel, and also Asterion, they're going to follow Edrahel. Can I go? We need to patrol. We need to find out what's around. We've not done too much of that. Sure, we've dug into Rivington, but what about beyond Rivington? We've got vines and even a cave. A cave that is so very close by. Footprints. That cave is occupied. 
and by no beast. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go inside. A cellar. Oh, that belongs to that very excitable dragonborn shopkeeper that we've met. What is she hiding down here? <clears throat> deep gnomes. I need to tell her she has a deep gnome infestation. <laughs> no, let's go say hello. The boss is expecting you. Hasn't forgotten what you did for him at Moonrise. That would be Wolbrin. What's your name? Hoagie Nunners? Oh, these are great names. We've got Dolber's Frint. A blacksmith called Bumpnaggle. Ah, yes. The legendary Bumpnaggle. He's able to construct whatever you need. He's a trader. I'll buy from him later. That ladder would lead up into that shopkeeper's room. And here's where we need to go. There he is, Barkus Root, our old buddy. Ah, there you are. Good. We need to strategize. Wolbrin is planning something. Lots of moving parts. Uh, I'm still trying to suss the details myself. I believe that. You look worried. I am. I knew him rash, but this is unspeakable. Speak to him. Help him see sense. Someone has to. There he is. Wolbrin Bongle, a deep gnome I do not like. Good to see you. Wasn't sure you'd make it to the city. Regretting it yet? I spent a lot of time thinking of worst case scenarios while I was locked in that cell you plucked me out of at Moonrise. I didn't imagine anything as bad as this. The Gondians have handed Enver Gortash the means to bring about the end of liberty in Baldur's Gate. And the citizens have rolled out the red carpet for the new tyrant. Resistance fighters are few and far between. My iron hands, what's left of the Harpers, and you. I hope. About that, Gortash is a dead man. I have reasons of my own for taking him down. As long as our objective is the same, the reason doesn't matter to me. We have a common enemy. But neither of us gets what we want until we deal with our biggest obstacle. The Steel Watch, they're a threat to you, me, and every man, woman, and child in this city. They act all civilized, servants of the people, but they only serve one man. When he becomes Grand Duke, it will only get worse. Laws will change, freedoms will vanish, and soon you'll be accused and sentenced before you've even committed a crime. And the fucking Gondians are to blame for all of it. I felt that rage. Dear God. Why put the blame on the Gondians? They invented the Steel Watchers, and they're building an army of them. They've always been happy to provide their technology to despots in exchange for a stipend and the freedom to work in peace. They would have licked Saravok's boots given the chance. And now they'll kiss Gortash's ring while this city screams. I had a plan to put a stop to them. But the way things are now, if we stick our heads above ground, the watchers are on us like flies on shit. I believe that. But tell me about your plan. Same as it always is. Eliminate the threat. In this case, the foundry where these atrocities are produced. The Gondians are ingenious, but we're more than equal to them. There's nothing they can build that the Iron Hands can't tear down. I've built something unique for just that purpose. A rune powder bomb. First of its kind. Fifty wizards high on the weave couldn't summon this kind of firepower. Get the bomb inside the Gondian facility and... Boom. Problem solved. Wolbrin, please. This is too far. Everyone in the foundry would be killed. Quiet, Barkus. The adults are talking. Hold on now. Don't talk to him like that. Normally, we would use our oath of vengeance. The Gondians made a choice. They will suffer the consequences. But we know so little. We only know about them from Wolbrin. And he's not always reliable. 
Barkus has a point. It sounds like mass murder. It's liberation. The Gondians picked their side the minute they took orders from Gortash. If they had any courage, they'd have refused him and died like heroes, spitting in his face. Now they'll die like the dogs they are. Either way, they would die. Gortash is the enemy, not the Gondians. I'll find another way. Or instead, I'll make contact with the Gondians. Maybe they'll see reason. That's what I've been saying. There may yet be a peaceful solution. Fine. You want to try flapping your gums in the belly of the beast? Be my guest. But their idea of diplomacy is a steel fist shoved where the sun don't shine. So take the bomb. Just in case I'm right and you're wrong. That's fair. It's a better idea for Edrahil to have the bomb than Wolverine. If it was his choice, so many would die. Fine, I'll take it. But I'll only use it as a last resort. As long as you see sense, I don't care when you see it. The foundry is in the lower city. Down by the docks. Beautiful building. Belching smoke into the sky day and night. Getting inside won't be easy. But when you do, place the bomb at the heart of the facility. Get yourself back to street level. The streets will be clear of watchers in no time. Wolverin is a bit mad. But we've got his bomb. So now we get to determine what we do with it. 50 to 124 damage. That's a lot. Let's have a look. We'll go talk to Philomene. Then we'll continue our patrol until we actually make it into Worms Crossing. There she is. Right there, doing a bit of work. Now you've spoken to the big man. Good to see you. Never thought I'd meet you again. Let alone fight on the same side. Glad we both made it out of Grimforge alive. And that I didn't have to use that rune powder to make a point. Yeah, me too. Glad I could defuse the situation. Funny. You're going to need that sense of humor here. I overheard you're going to be helping us fight the good fight. Knew I would have regretted blowing you up. Better get on with it then. Wolverine wouldn't have put his trust in you for nothing. I agree. We'll talk to that traitor later on. There's Nichols. It stopped. But it'll happen again. It keeps happening. The shivering, shaking, quaking. Don't you feel it? Oh, that would be a bit more intense for Deep Gnomes. They have a rather intimate relationship with the rocks. Yes, it keeps happening. What is it? There's something underneath the city. Inside the rock. But when I ask the stone why it shakes, it only screams. I want to go home. That's terrifying. Imagine you kick a rock and it begins to screech. Oh, I don't like that. Let's get out of here. Can't Poor down. Nichols. He's having a very, very bad day. He just wanted to, I don't know, join a rebellion but not have to face danger. Something like that. I never thought I would lend aid over to a radical deep gnome group. But here we are. Need to find a way forward. We're going to head under the bridge. There's always evil under a bridge. And so we need to find out what it might be. Once we head into Worms Crossing, we shouldn't need to head back here too often. Though, we're still trying to find all the different body parts of Tribbles the Clown. Where they could be, I don't know. Why they're all over, again, I don't know. That's pretty weird. We're not going to head to the left, we don't need to. More footsteps. Here's an old ramshackle bridge that we're going to cross. Covered in moss, too. I do love moss. Feels great underfoot. A wooden chest. Oh, right. I had Edger Hill throw that from above. Listen, he's got to work out. A broken ship. Wait. Yeah, why would there be a ship here? There must have been a drunk captain. There's no reason to bring it so close to shore. Look at how difficult that would be. There's not a lot of room to maneuver. Now we've got what? A supposed steam cloud. I don't see it. 
Though I do see a fresh corpse and a broken tripwire. Perception failed. Let's move closer. Watch how you go. There's a trap. Oh, no kidding. A blast mine. I've got a question. Would my spells of shatter break a trap? It's got one HP, that's true. Let's have a look. Damages all nearby creatures and objects. Let's try it out, just for a bit of fun. I've got scrolls for it. It does work! Oh, that's really good news. That could save us a lot of time. Well, I'm happy about that. A tripwire. That, we're actually going to disarm. Let's do it. A DC of 18. 33. We've made it. Another trap after that. Let's move back a bit. Another scroll of shatter. We'll cast that spell as well. Hit as much as we're able to. Another trap gone. That's great. Are we done? Are there any more traps? Wait, hold on. Michael. Who are you? Michael. Dying Stone Lord Thug. Let's go Many talk to him. Are listening. Just get this. Uh, my legs. I can't feel them. Tell the others. Let the boss know. This man is not long for this world. He's probably only good for one question. What happened here? Guild. Wanted the cargo. You hear the blood gurgle in his struggling lungs. His last ounce of strength is spent. What a dramatic way to die. He must have been a theater kid. Well, what do you have? 13 gold. Bodies all around. They're very fresh. Oh, look at that. A statue. I don't want to go in front of that. So instead, we'll move to the right. Another fresh body. Watch how you go. There's a trap. I'll come back to just really go over the loop. But for now, let's go around. I'm not worried about the steam clouds. A decapitated body. I'll take your gold. Oh yeah, there's a lot of traps. I'm not going to trigger them. It's still warm. What's over here? That, that ship has my ship was at Moonrise Towers, if I'm not mistaken. And over to the left, Looks a like gang conflict. Are about to fight. Let's go say hello. Nobody messes with the Stone Lord rattling. Nine fingers sent her love, asshole. Your Stone Lord's a dead man walking. You help me kill these asses. The guild will sprinkle you with gold. Sprinkle Enderhill. Does he look like a cupcake? Maybe to his companions. But I would rather not get involved in whatever this is. Too late, Cook. Nobody but us leaves this place alive. Wait, hold on. What did you call Edger Hill? Those are dying words, friend. Asterion gets to move first. It yes. looks like the guild isn't hostile to our side. They've got four members. Bug Bludgeon, Charming Latham, Archer Valicia, and also their leader, Farlin. For the Stone Lord's side, they've got five members total. And we're going to go after Blunt Scuncher. He's going last anyway. Hunter's Mark for additional piercing damage. Next, Dread Ambusher, a ranged attack. A near guaranteed chance to hit him. 34 damage. Another afterwards. And he's not dead. One more attack. Now he's dead. Asterion, you're done. Shiv Dahlia on their side is now moving in, attacking Asterion, dazing him, hitting him for a total of 15 damage. Now the guild is attacking, shooting at Shiv Dahlia. She's been hit a lot. Lizelle's gonna move in. Lizelle is a monk to honor the guards of Orpheus, but I've also given her a few levels into Rogue. That way she would be able to unlock that thief subclass providing more proficiency and skills, but also giving her an additional bonus action. Instead of using Step of the Wind Dash, a monk ability where we're able to dash using a bonus action, but it also requires a key point, we're able to use Cunning Action Dash to only spend a bonus action. 
Let's go after Shiv Dahlia. We'll try to stun her. Let's do that. She's been stunned. Next, we're going to use Flurry of Blows to knock her prone. She's now prone. Continue to hit her. One more attack. Let's try that. It's a bonus action. And she's dead. Shiv Dahlia, I'll take your potion. Your gold too. Lizelle, you'll move over to the right. We don't need to all group up. Her turn is over. Fungal's bee is now moving. Bringing out a wolf companion. Old Flake Eyes. He's using a Hunter's Mark on Asterion. He was able to hit. Not only once, but twice. Farland threw a bomb, catching herself on fire, taking one point of damage. Maybe she was trying to intimidate them, saying, I'm so crazy, I'll blow myself up to harm all of you. Lupus Major tried to attack Edrahil. He's going to jump in right by Kairos. Let's do that. Divine Smite level 3. Come on. A miss. Unfortunate. We'll try again. Whoa. Paralyzing critical. Now he's paralyzed. He had 117 health, but now he's only got 44. Paladins are incredible at being able to burst down single targets. Your turn is over. Kairos. He wasn't able to move. Jahira, you'll go after Lupus Major, a minor target, but get them anyway. Try again. Alright, action surge. You're not done. That companion is gone. Let's move up just a little bit. Next, we're going to use Trip Attack. Let's try to knock down Kairos. He's now prone and also paralyzed. Your turn is over. Bring out your melee weapon. Back over to Charming Latham, using one Ice Knife. Kairos was able to make his save. Asterion, you get to move in to attack. But you can't move very far, unfortunately. Sneak attack. Go after Kairos. A miss. Very unfortunate. Attack again. Kairos is dead. We only need to go after one more target. In turn. The guild is now attacking. Oh, right, I forgot about Fungalsby. Everyone forgets about Fungalsby. Lazelle, she's gonna move up. Flurry of blows right on Fungalsby. He's now prone. Next, Flurry of blows on Old Flake Eyes. He's also prone. Let's kill Fungalsby. And he's dead. Lazelle is now gonna try to stun Old Flake Eyes. He's not stunned, but he's only got 24 HP left. He's getting back up. Hunter's Mark on Asterion. Shooting again, Arrow of Acid. Poor Asterion. 20 HP left. They nearly got him. Farland is throwing down, what, another bomb? She's going crazy. Edrahil, tank out old Flake Eyes. It's over. You did good, stranger. Someone to try to slink away rather than get involved. They wouldn't earn the gratitude of the guild. We weren't really aiming for that at all. If we had a better decision like, let's take out all the criminal scum, sure. But our only real option to take them all out would have Edger Hill saying, hey, I'll kill you, but I also want your stuff. He wouldn't say that. But we're happy to help. Who did we just kill? A new flavor of scum that's been muscling in on our business. Agents of the Stone Lord. It is true, again, that we do have a greater evil at play. Otherwise, why wouldn't every Vengeance Paladin just be city guards trying to stop all petty crime? We're going after major threats. And one day, if we need to clear out the guild, we'll do so. Stone Lord? Never heard of him. Lucky you. He's a newcomer to our delightful underworld. And he doesn't play nice with others. What were his agents doing here? We think the Stone Lord and his cronies are in league with the absolute cultists. This little operation here certainly suggests so. They were shifting something valuable by boat. But that something belongs to the guild now. There it is. 
Wrong, it belongs to me. I could finish up by taking them all out, but we already took care of the tadpoles. I'll leave you to your spools. Goodbye. I don't really want their loot. That isn't for me. Kairos, he's got a rare hammer. Corpse grinder. Okay. 1d4 thunder damage. 1d4 fire damage. When you miss an attack, you deal 5 bludgeoning damage anyway. Of course, I'm also able to deal fire damage. I'll take that. Smoke powder bomb. A goblet. And a letter. Do not fail. The guild has caught wind of our activities down by the river. Hey, I know that song. The Stone Lord has personally requested that you see off any visitors. I have heard murmurings that your dockside crew begin to doubt the tells around the Stone Lord's capabilities. Keep our shipment secure, and he will not need to come down in person to make a demonstration. Edrahill's going to check for any tadpoles. We did take care of a barrel of them, but it appears there's another one. We can't permit that. Let's go have a look around. A shell? Interesting. I've not seen that before. I wonder what it's for. Oh, it's a shield. Plus two to armor class. That's really interesting. Storage. We should check that. Two more specimen. Oh, I don't like that. Not even a little bit. I thought we got them all before, but evidently not. Going. And a chest. Don't mind if I do. That's why we told them they could have it. There's not a lot here. And what is here? We don't really need it, do we? No. We've got loot. And the general idea, in my view, is that they would lead us to the guild, or even let us in. Then, if we wanted to wipe them all out, there we go. We could get them. There's not too much over here, but there is a passageway. Let's go inside. A little smuggler's den. We've got some loot. I'll have to come back to be thorough later. Because I'm going to be buying so many different goods whenever we get to Baldur's Gate proper. What do we have here? A note to Kairos. Boss. I found this out there on a poor schmuck. This isn't from the stash. I'm not Van. I know the rules. Van, what did you do? What about that ship's manifest? The Stone Lord's goods. We don't need to see the man to know he's serious about his property. Interesting. Alright. Oh, I think I found Van. He's just hanging around. You idiot. Here's a warning. Let's look at that. Seems like Van needed to be reminded that you don't take from the stash. The stash is mine and you get what I give you. I find you taken from the stash, you end up like Van. Be smart. Don't be like Van. Agreed. Don't be like Van. You fool. Treasure crates. That's not a lot of money. What a shame. A trap. I'm not worried about no stinking trap. I've got Edrahill. What's inside? Oh, hello. Bone spike boots. What do you do? Evasive instinct. You have a plus one bonus to armor class and saving throws as long as you're not wearing armor or holding a shield. That's really good. I could give that to Karlak or any barbarian using Eagle Heart. We would jump around so very much. And you've also got Brutal Leap. Hold on, let me have a look at that too. Leap at a target and possibly knock it prone. Oh, that's awesome. It's a bonus action. I like that. Let's go back to camp. We'll go to bed, then finally head over to Worms Crossing. We just need to rest up. Maybe just one more time. Things are going to get crazy very soon. There's been a bit of a change, but do not panic. Beards do grow back. Andrew Hill has been out in the wild for a long time. He's finally back in civilization, so because of that, he thought he should clean up a bit. He's also growing out his hair. There's been a bit of a change, but anything can be modified with just a bit of time. Let's talk to our companions. We're just here to camp out for a bit until we're able to initiate a few conversations. Like over here with Shadowheart. Hi, Carlyle. Damn! 
It can't have been easy for Lazelle to stand up to Vlacketh like that. But there's nothing that woman can't do. That's true. And Jahira. We just played host to an undying queen. Oh, and that's without our fine silverware. Lazelle has courage turning her back on a lifetime's belief. As for us, best we stay out of interplanar politics, I think. Orpheus is on his own. But should Great Vlacketh come to settle a score with Lazelle, well, <laughs> I might be convinced to kill her. Undying or not, she was very loud. That's what I'm saying. She was incredibly loud. She mistakes being loud with being bright. Asterion, what are your thoughts? So, Lazel's finally seen the light and turned on her mistress. It took a little time, but she got there. Though it's not over yet. Masters rarely let their slaves go without a fight. There's bound to be a fight, but we did take out an entire crash. Finally, let's talk to Shadowheart. I wonder what it's about. I can still feel the shadow fell all over me. Still hear her words in my ear. I feel unclean. I do get that. You mean Char? Forget it. Her spite can't hurt you now. I hope that's true, but I'm not so sure. She has a far reach and a long memory. I have an idea. Something I've wanted to do for a while. Something that might help me put her in the past. But I'll need your help. Of course. Wait until the others are asleep. Then come with me. There's a place we can go. Down the coast a little. Oh, interesting. If it leads to anything, a more blunt version will be shared elsewhere. My step. I can't show everything here. That would be a bit much. It's not permitted. But elsewhere, whatever we want, it could happen. Let's go to bed right away because we need to find out what's going to happen. This will do. Get in the water. Wait, hold on. You first. <sighs> My feet aren't touching the bottom anymore. It's terrifying. Do people really enjoy this? I believe so. You can hold on to me if you're afraid. You know, you didn't need to wait until I was in the water to hold me. Come here. <laughs> Thank you. I needed that. I needed to know I can face things without Shah. I don't want to go back. Not just yet. Now don't you dare stop. <sighs> Back where we began, Worms Crossing. That moment between Edrahill and Shadowheart was quite sweet, but it was brief. The full, uncensored version, which you're able to see elsewhere, it's much more involved. It's much longer. I can't show it here as I did mention before, but elsewhere. We could circumvent the guard, that's true. We could go over to the right, jump to where we need to go. But I'm ready for a bit of conflict. Let's go say hello. Halt! By orders of Lord Gortash, refugees are no longer allowed in the city. Turn around. Do I look like a refugee? 
I'm not a refugee. Well, do you have the means to support yourself? Oh, you want a bribe? That's interesting. Don't worry, Asterion will get our gold back later. I can take care of myself. Right. Article 30.1.5 of the Council's Decree on Extraordinary Wartime Measures. I am confiscating that. The city thanks you for your contribution. Your name? You are full of crap. Oh boy. You are scamming me. Give me my money back. Oh, take it up with the Duke if you don't like it. Now, your name? Sure, why not? My name is Edrahill. Well met, citizen. Your parasite stares. From the construct, you feel connection, resonance. Tell me about that thing. I am a steel watcher, citizen. Here to serve the people of Baldur's Gate in the name of Lord Enver Gortash. State your business. I'm a herbalist by trade, Sir Fist. My assistants and I were out collecting blooms for that rub rot going around. Oof, nasty business. Contagious. Aha. Uh -huh. Eyes open, body still. All right, sure. I'll do that. Behind the Watcher's gaze, a presence awakens. You are seen. You are known. Your party's prior transgressions are reflected in its stare. As witnessed by the cult's ever-alert, scrying eyes, it has heard the howls of slaughtered goblins. It has seen the deep shadows of Grimforge and the stone floors left bloodied. It knows the cold walls of Moonrise Towers and the cultists who fell there. The Watcher speaks directly into your mind with a voice like poisoned honey. You are marked for special treatment. Not simply an enemy of the people, but an enemy of the Absolute. Come quietly, or die. It feels good to be recognized for our many achievements and events. Sure, I'll go with you. I don't mind. Your peaceful surrender has been noted. You will be transferred to Worms Rock Prison, where you will await further sentencing. This, you pile of junk! Villains. Thank My you, son. Nimble. All right, let's get out of here. We've got allies. I'm glad that we do. We'll get inside and have a look around. Perfect. We've also got a waypoint. That's good news. What's over to the left? We'll begin with one building at a time. The flop house. That's where we need to go. Let's talk to as I many as we can. So many victims for Casador here. They're the kind of people no one would ever miss. Then I'm glad you're here, Drem. Bloody ages we spent hiking from Murren, and they won't let us in the city proper. Bollocks! We're adventurous, damn it! Why won't they let you in? The bridge god had some shite about a coronation. Couldn't really make head nor tail of it. I get it. And over here, Rosanna. Come to Baldur's Gate, he said. Adventurers get welcomed as heroes, he said. Poxy Drim and his bleeding notions. Yeah, Drim, you idiot. Oh, Alright, who else do we have around here? Griska, a traveler. Alright. Maybe the... me. Word to the wise. Give that ill mate to Temple a wide berth. Rude buggers. Certainly not bringing my trade there again. So you're a traitor. To be fair, their high priest just died. Does that excuse being rude? Excluding folk? Come off it. They wouldn't let me in. Spouted some tripe about my sort and absolutist murderers. I only wanted to sit down a minute. I get it. I get it. What's your trade? Let me show you. Sure, what do you have? 
Oh, you don't have too much. All right, I'll go then. Pleasure doing business. Sure. Maybe again one day. Tenant logs. All right. Bernier, Gold Grind, Grishka, Rosanna. No one we need to worry about or be concerned with. Ah, I remember a dwarf who's got a red garb. Wait, hold on. You're not a dwarf. Sir, good, sir. Give me three days and... Oh, I... Apologies. Thought you were someone else. Greetings, so forth, so on. Right, about that. Who did you think I was? The landlord. Sir Frego Antuna. A most generous soul, I assure you. Oh, I bet. Yeah, look at that. I'm looking for a killer, a dwarf, dressed in red, just like you. But he's not a dwarf. I won't be incorrect. Not like that. Who's inside? Quilia, a cook. Let's go say hi. Blooming hell, you look famished. I've got some victuals that'll warm you right up. No, thank you. I'm okay. I'm doing fine. Now we get to go upstairs. I just wanted to be sure that we weren't missing anything. I know that we need to be here, but before we go up there, let's have a look at the map. There's a few traders, sure. We'll come here, we'll go north, then later to the east. I think the caress is over to the right. I wonder what we're gonna find upstairs. We've got to investigate for sure. Worker Bernier. And over to the left, two characters who are level 11. That's interesting. We should go. I do not want to face the master if we're late for his black mass. Soon, sister. I only need one more mark. We have enough for the master. No more needed. It's not for the master, it's for me. I spent 100 years eating rats and dogs, but soon I'll be able to feast. I want someone there ready for me. And once the mass is done and our Lord grants us freedom, I can celebrate by drinking them dry. Cazador promised you your freedom, and you believed him. Ha! You were never burdened with intelligence, Petras. But your load seems especially light these days. Astarian? It... It cannot be. Oh, that's no way to welcome back a brother, doll. <laughs> Didn't you miss me? Why would you come back? You got out. You were free. You know what? Adrahel doesn't need to say a word. Hold your tongue. Isn't it obvious, sister? He wants to ascend with the rest of us. He heard about the ritual and the power our master will grant us. So he came back with his tail between his legs, hoping all would be forgiven. <sighs> you always were an idiot, Petras. Is he hiding? Tell me! Ah! Ah! Brother! Please! Andrew Hill is not going to help out. He'll say nothing. Actually, instead, Tonker Burn, your choice. You heard them. Tell me what I need to know. Now! The master is preparing the Black Mass beneath his palace. There's a defiled chapel. It was hidden there the entire time, hidden from us all. I'm going to stop Cazador. What the hell's happened to you, Astarian? What are you? I'm more than what I was. And I'm not afraid of anything anymore. The sun can't harm me. Cazador can't compel me. I'm the only person who can stop him. Now go, before I change my mind about roasting you, brother. 
This isn't over, Astarian. <laughs> Poor fools. They actually think Kazador will save them. We should have killed them. They're no threat to us. And they have no choice but to do Kazador's bidding. I pity them. Worst of all, they don't know their fate's already set. <laughs> They're doomed. The only question is whether their lives will be sacrificed to a monster like Kazador, or serve a greater purpose. Seven sigils on seven spawn. And Kazador has the other six. We have to face him. And take that power for ourselves. For ourselves. Interesting. For yourself, you mean? Well, yes, technically. Only I will ascend and gain the ritual's power. But we're a team. If I become all powerful, then we become all powerful. We are a team, aren't we? You are still with me. Sure, Asterion. Can we go? We got what we need. The ritual's below the palace. All right. Let's go. This place stinks of rat blood and despair. Typical of a vampire hunt. All right. We can't really poke around in here, can we? If I do that, I'll get into trouble. Worker Bernier would certainly rat me out. Here's a room I've not been inside of. A door that leads outside, it's locked, but I don't see a reason to go out there. It's a bathroom, okay. Ah, here we go. Can't slow down. A ladder. We're trying to find that room that belongs to a doppelganger. It can't be too hard to find. We're in the attic. Here's a room we can't get to. The only connecting piece is the wardrobe. That shapeshifter's key unlocked the door. Interesting. Very interesting. Temple plans. These tunnels were full of shapeshifters. Father Logan's name is written here too. Is it now? And here's another letter. Messy splatters of deep red brown adorn this scrap of parchment. Those wishing to face the Dreadlord's Tribunal and enter the Temple of Baal must lay the targets on his list and frame the corpses as a murder by the Cult of the Absolute. Bring the victim's hand as proof of the killing. Walk in blood, aspirant. Duke Stelmane, Father Lorgan, Dribbles the Clown, Alexander Rainforest, and also Frank Pear Tree, all killed. There's still many who are still alive, or maybe they're dead now. Hopefully we'll be able to save them. What else do we have here? Well, I'll actually pick that up. I'll take your kit. And over to the right, we have another node, also covered in blood. Blood near the bed. I'll check that in just a moment. Two hands, now two hands, two of them! More needed, not enough. Must cover myself in glory to be covered in blood, more! Alright, he's incredibly stable. You notice some blood has pooled on the wooden floor. As long as I don't find a dry, crusty sock, I'm okay with that. Let's try an investigation skill check. Trying to discern the source of the blood. A DC of only 10. I should have put on my headband. A 15, we made it. You notice the blood source. A body hidden under the bed. Normal people would keep a stash of magazines or books or maybe even a few dust bunnies. Not that guy. Let's pull it out. I wonder who it is. Gold grind. You've got a key, interesting. I know this key. It's identical to the one held by that corpse in the tunnels. You're not wrong. We've got a scroll. I could talk to her, that's true. Hold on, I'm gonna put on my warped headband. Now I'm very, very smart. Let's go over here. We've got it, let's use it. I'm very sorry to wake you up, but I need answers. The corpse regards you lifelessly. 
What were you doing when you died? Seeking answers. Okay. What answers did you seek? My boy had a secret. Evil secret. Your own child killed you? What was your son's secret? Killed folk. Slowly. He liked it. Did he now? Did your son kill you? No, instead, who is your son's next target? Ill Mater Temple didn't see exactly who. She was killed before Father Lorgan. Who has your son killed? Well, we know that. Did your son kill you? Yes. Grinned. Whole time. The spell's power wanes. You can ask no more questions. I didn't have much more to inquire. We'll get vengeance for you. We'll do that much. Now what we'll do, we'll leave the room... We'll go back down and get ready to go inside of the caress. But first, we'll get changed. After that, we'll investigate these rooms, then finally head up north. Don't we all look quite dapper? We can't go inside of a brothel wearing only our armor. That wouldn't be right. If only Shadowheart was here. I could go back and get her, but we need to be here for business, not pleasure. Unless our business is pleasure, but... Let's go talk to a fellow who's been yelling. The Great Guard Steward. The fists have not been very kind, not here. Listen up. Bloody gnomes. We need to find where they burrowed themselves up. You! You an adventurer? Looking to pad your purse? Find their foxhole. Bring me their chief's head. The fist will reward you well. You're talking to the wrong person. If you were talking to anyone else, you would have a very quick fall and a sudden stop. We're not going to do it. Goodbye. <laughs> then you're no friend of the fist. No matter. I'll find someone else. Most folks around here will do almost anything. You pay them enough. What's funny is that he's so close to what he's trying to find. Look at that cave. It's so close. But he's an idiot. We're going to drink a potion of animal speaking. After that, a potion of mind reading. There it is. We might need that later. Let's move on. Oh, that statue I bought. Do you remember that? It actually confers a benefit. I was wondering where that blessed condition came from. It's from my statue. That's incredible. I only bought it because I thought it would look cool, but now I know it's actually there to help you. Let's go inside. Let's talk to... The Mamzelle first. A weary traveler, battered and bruised. You come for sustenance. No, decadence. A mien cool as ice, yet eyes burning hot. Oh yes, I know your bliss. A sturdy dwarf, a leather whip, she gives, you receive, or have I misjudged you? A little bit, yeah. You're way off. Am I? Your eyes tell a story, sweeting. You crave more than pleasure, you crave penance. It's Fion you seek, our stern librarian. She isn't here today, alas. Your penance must wait. Well, we've other ways to fill your void. A drink for one, a pair of drow for another. Choose your sin. A pair of drow. If only Shadowheart was here, then maybe. But unfortunately, I've got some bad news for you. There's a fresh killed corpse. A lady dwarf. Could that be her? Murdered! Ye gods, the poor thing! Oh, by the mother of cats, I pray she didn't suffer. They'll miss that face. Else, the regulars will miss her more. They swarmed her like honeybees at the hive. Oh. 
Losing Fionn slashed a big hole in my coin purse. I should get to replacing her. That was quick. The woman is dead, and you're concerned about money. Sweeting. This is Baldur's Gate. I've seen more murders than a butcher's right eye. There'll be time for tears. Cruel as it is, I must turn my mind to business, or more precisely, the lack of it. I don't like that, but let's move on. Mm? I'm not here for your money. You have drought escorts on hand. That does sound tempting. Twins, yes. Hands of such skill they could turn stone to silk. Your body could suffer no knot they can't untangle. They're through the curtain to the right. You'll need coin and stamina in abundance to enjoy their services, but the gold will be as well spent as you are. She's good. She's clever. Though, for them to get the knots out of Edgerhill, they would need a mallet, they would need boxing gloves, and so much more. I doubt they could. Are there other options for companionship? Nisha, our lovely nymph. But she's engaged in the nymph's grotto on the top floor, sweeting. The client's a favorite of hers, too. I doubt you'll be able to tear her away. But we are blessed to have a devil in residence at the moment. A temporary guest. But he asked that I send any potential clients his way. Everyone who's paid a visit looks quite changed by the experience. We know who that is. Raphael. But to be sure, did the devil give you its name? Indeed he did. Raphael. Exceedingly handsome and with a voice that could make the foulest blasphemy seem the sweetest hymn. Oh, I bet. I'm leaving now. I'm going to talk to your cat. Kira, adorable. Come to pay your respects to the real lady of the house, I see. What a clever creature you are. It's your lucky day. I am receiving compliments at this time, and you are most welcome to make an offering. I don't know how my cat got in here. That's pretty funny. Your paws are fit to overturn only the daintiest crystal wear. Sometimes a lady has to make her presence known. Delicately, of course. The unwashed rabble who frequent this establishment have much to learn from your deference. And I must suffer their foibles alone. But they do say a burden shared is a burden halved. Sure, maybe. Tell me about that shady pair over there. What are they whispering about? Can't you hear from here? They're talking about the new top cat in the criminal underbelly. Go and listen for yourself. As for them personally, one never washes and instead douses himself with rose oil, while the other can't hold his drink. You are very handy to have on my side. Thank you. I'm getting more information from her than the owner. That's incredible. Do I want to know about who's through those fancy curtains? The drow. Two of our most popular courtesans. A night with them seems to be rather life-changing, if you can afford it. Of course, they are siblings. But judging from the throngs of clients they draw, most of the city is as disgusting as they are. I believe it. What are your thoughts on the clientele as a whole? That's rather a broad topic. We get all sorts here. But there is one frequent visitor whose very presence offends me. He dresses fabulously, but stinks of the hells. Something infernal, to be sure. Abhorrent. We know of that person. We do. 
All right. We'll talk to a few other people. Wait, hold on. I could look at your finance book. That's interesting. Oh, it's not cheap to run your business. I'm not going to look at that into too much detail. It's not really pertinent. What's your name? Hoots Hooligan. That's a great name. Sorry. Now, that there's a face I'd remember if I'd seen it. Welcome to Charesse's Caress. What can Hoots do for you, stranger? You got a taste for ale, I reckon. Or maybe... Ah, forget it. My new brew could drop you in the wink of a spectator's eye. A challenge? Okay, I'll give that a try. Don't know about that, chum. Hoots Hooch packs a stronger wallop than all ten of my knuckles. Could beef you up, sharpen your tongue, or knock you out cold. No telling till the first drop hits your gullet. A new IPA? All right, come on. Let's do it. Damn. The man knows what he wants. First one's on the house. So, don't come bawling to me if your big toes fall off or your tongue coils in a knot. Oh, God, okay. Tell me about the story of this place. Charesse Caress, the mamzelle's brainchild. Wet your tongue, soak your skin, scratch your itch. Get the attention you want and avoid the attention you don't. I got gotcha. you. I bet a barkeep in his place hears all sorts of stories. My business is slinging tankards, not hoarding secrets. I'd like to keep it that way. But you poke some folk hard enough, they're bound to squeal. And Mamzelle Amira there looks about ready to burst. That's your boss. But thank you for telling me. I've got the hooch. Jahira didn't like that. I don't know why. I'm not going to drink it. Not right now. Let's talk over here. A fist and a barmaid. Yeah, these members have not been great. They've been rather troublesome. You're looking parched, sweetheart. Another tankard? Hells, darling. Another sip and I'm like to spill over. But other anchoring for spicier flavors. How about you give me a taste? I'm not going to get myself involved. He's an idiot. And she's really here to make money. She's going to make money despite him being an idiot. I'll watch. What'd you say, doll? Have a set on my lap. Let's see what pops up. Darling, how you set me a quiver. You are a beast among men. No, a dragon. Setting my phoenix nest aflame. <sighs> Oh. I shall slake your first dragon. You will part your lips and drink of my essence. Oh, I will drink your essence. Hoots, order up another tankard for the fist. Her what? Her nest? Oh, dear God, the face he made too. I didn't want to see that. I wish I could unsee it. Do we have a spell for that? Oh, these two. That's a lot of information. We'll come back to them in just a moment. I'll move over to the right. Ah, an event. Cabaret here featuring Roll the Despoiler. The highest kicks in Baldur's Gate guaranteed. Oh, there she is. I like her. You can stare as much as you like. That's it. And over here, a performer. Another one. Bar dance. Continue down. Enjoy the fiddling. Throw a few coins our way and let us play on into the night. I like your hat. And over to the left, the twins. I can't do anything. Shadowheart isn't here. If she was, then sure. My, my. I can tell you are a special one from a single glance. You have but to ask. And we can grant you a moment of pleasure. Don't be shy. Oh, he's not. But you should be paying him. I mean, look at Andrew Hill. All of you should be paying him. How did you end up here? 
I used to work as a courtesan back home, and my sister as an artisanal masseuse. But men are treated like dogs by the Underdarks matriarchs, so we fled. We found surfaces craved the body of a drow like a drug. Life is easy in our line of work. Oh, I bet it is. As long as you're here of your own free will. Life is prosperous. I'm much happier kissing the many lips of the surface than tending a field or manning a shop. I'm sure. I am glad you have found a place where you feel safe. I'd have to restrain myself far more than any play bindings do if I worked in another field. This is a place where I can be myself boundlessly. There are so many who come to me speaking of a fixation that no one else has ever been able to share with them, and never will again. A once-in-a-lifetime moment of passion. Every day. What could be better? Don't you want to try it? Trust me, you don't want to miss my signature Mesoberanzan love trick. Your what trick? I just want to know what it is. You two look uncannily alike, by the way. We are twins. Oh, you don't actually lie with one another, do you? We can make up a little show of kissing each other, but when we are hired at the same time, there are often many other clients in the room to attend to. Oh, I bet. All right, I'm going to leave for right now. Maybe later, but we're busy at the moment. We can't just go off and have some pleasure without Shadowheart. That would be wrong. There's no one else in here to talk to. Going outside through this passageway, well, that would lead to a very sudden drop. I don't want that. A very beautiful sight, but not important to me at the moment. Let's go back out there, and we're just going to have a look around. Oh, there's Valeria. You know what? I'll come back to these two. I'm going to talk to Valeria, that idiot. Oh, God. I can't stand you. Another case closed, another bottle open! Huzzah to Valeria! <laughs> Hang on a dick. I recognize that face. You were talking to Yanis after I left the temple. I bet she's put you up to something. Yeah, you're right. I have found some new evidence. Why must you busybodies insist on interrupting a perfectly good night? <sighs> Ugh, I know that look. You remind me of Devella. Fine! If you doubt my conclusions, out with it. What have you found? That's all that you have. All that you have are conclusions. No evidence to support them, you idiot. Devella sounds like someone I should be talking to. Who is she? My assistant. She's posted in the Lower City investigating Duke Stelmane's murder. Now, back to it. What have you found? Oh, a lot. I wonder if you would want to know all about it. I doubt it. A group of shape-shifting assassins were under the temple, along with more murder victims. While that is startling, it still doesn't disprove my theory that Brilgor killed Father Lorgan, does it? That's what you need if you want to change my mind. Hard evidence. A reason, too, if you're at it. Why was Lorgan killed? I've got so much to tell you. And I'm just going through it bit by bit. Alright? Father Lorgan's murder is just one part of a bigger plot. A ball plot. A ball plot? You as well? Devella's been harping on about ball for months. Fancies herself something of an expert. I assumed it was just a bunch of conspiracy cods while up in fear mongering. But she's been unusually insistent about this one, even for her. <sighs> Fine. I'll bite. What's your theory? Okay, sure. I don't need to actually have a theory, I've got proof. This document contains information connecting the murders to the ballist resurgence. 
no need to wave documents at me. I'm already drowning in paperwork as it is. Constable Devella is going to be a real pain in the trunk about this. Since you seem to be on an obnoxiously similar wavelength, why don't you seek her out? She'll be at the Elf Song Tavern. Show her the list, and I'll stay and inform the Fist here. Oh, and you'll need this pass. It'll give you access to the lower city. Have your drink. Enjoy. Well? What are you waiting for? You have a bloody conspiracy to solve. Move! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't work for you. All right. We need to go upstairs. That's what we're going to do at the moment. Another pass. I'm collecting them like candy. Where are you going? Do I even want to know? Oh, we are going to explore each room. I'll get into trouble for it, but I don't really care. No. Asterion. Use your nimble fingers. A DC of only 10. Of course he passed. Barring a nat 1, he's always going to pass. Oh, what a lovely room. A coronation admission pass. I'll take that and over to the right, two occupants. They're about to be busy. Let's stick our nose in. Gross. Oh yeah. Tell me. Am I beautiful? Nope. More than beautiful. You are the aurora stretched across the north skies. You are the golden dune swept across the Kalim. You are the fruit of the forbidden palm. Soft on my skin. Sweet on my tongue. You are my sin and salvation. Your parasite stirs, and you gaze at the nymph through the flaming fist's hungry eyes. Your muscles shiver with her longing. Your skin burns with her heat. What's... What's wrong, Jara? What are you... Wait, I know you. Oh no. Man, we're not safe from these people anywhere. You aren't safe. Get out of here now. I don't understand. What's... Your face. The Absolute has shown me. Jara, what's going on? Who's this oh. man? Oh. Your head screams in agony. The change has come. Pustules boiling beneath your skin, your bones twisting, your flesh rupturing. And suddenly, silence. What's happening? A mind flare. Could you put on some pants first? I wouldn't mind. Lizelle, you get to punch it first. I know how you feel about them. Especially when they're naked. <laughs> kind of. Thankfully, we can't see anything. Well, the tentacles, sure, but... Go on, punch again. <laughs> Nearly dead. Oh, that was quick. Good job, Lizelle. 12 HP. I'm not gonna use any key points. Edril, finish it. Use your bow for fun. It's done. Ha ha ha. Well, we've done a good job. What do you have on your body? A ring. My ring. And for you. Hells. I'd heard tales of mind flayers. Talons sharp as daggers and tentacles yet more fearsome. But no tail did justice to its ethereal beauty. It floats like a butterfly. Its blood shimmers like silver. That thing could have killed you. 
And you're musing on its beauty? How could I help it? I don't regret its death. But I marvel that such a work of art could ever live. Her gaze intensifies. Your breath quickens and your heart skips a beat. The woman's senses are heightened and her fire stoked. The mind flare is no mere curiosity, but an object of desire. The creature aroused you, didn't it? Why should I deny it? My urge is as natural as the grape upon the vine. But perhaps there are other flavors that might satisfy my palate. I'm not interested in sex, but thanks. <laughs> not sex. Something far more intoxicating. Rapture. Close your eyes. And listen. You know what? It's a weird situation for your paladin to have someone give them the ASMR treatment. But sure, let's allow it. You see only darkness. Her voice shines through it, warmer than the sun, yet cooler than night. The all-being. Here, there is no suffering. Here, you want for nothing. Here, you are anything. You have one word. Tell me, what will you be? Edrahill doesn't want to be revered. He's already powerful. Money is not a factor to him. It's a means to an end. Instead, let's say one day he no longer needs to fight. He has righted so many wrongs. He has love in his life many friends, he would be contented. You are more than contented. You are at total peace. Your belly is full, your mind rested, your eyes bright. No more will you hear the clang of steel on steel. No more will you fear the cry of a wolf, the growl of an ogre. You are warm. You are safe. Your flesh shivers, your heart bursts. True ecstasy for one fleeting moment. Open your eyes. I'll remember you, and you'll remember me. No, I doubt that. I'm not going to clean up your room either. Oh, a new condition. Rapture. Affected entity has a 1d6 bonus to attack rolls ability checks, and saving throws until our next long rest. That's incredible! We're not going to bed for a bit then. We can't do that. Let's continue to move on. We're gonna have a look around. Elminster's Library. Uh-oh. Moan loudly in the library at all times. Oh god! All of you need to be bonked. Asterion, open that door for me. Wash your hands afterwards. Who knows what's been in that keyhole. Okay, so that old dwarf lady worked here. Stacks of scrolls. That could have magic for me. Scroll apply. I'll take that. Okay. And over here. There's not too much. Dimension door. A journal as well. Let's check it out. He's getting worse. The whispers. The night terrors. The blood. I know he's hiding something, and the others in the flop house know it too. I've seen how they look at him, how they look at me. They're scared of him, and I can't blame them. I am too. What a tragic story, and no one cares. That's why we are going to provide vengeance. It's what we do best. Rules of the reading room. Oh God, let's have a look. Anyone caught pleasuring themselves in a library will be tethered to the bookcase of chained books. Any wizards caught examining the special collection without express permission will be commanded to read aloud to the whole library the passage they were enjoying. Anyone breaking the silence at a library will be promptly gagged. I'm leaving. I'm leaving right now. That's too much knowledge for me. Another room. The Devil's Den. Well, we know who is in that room. I'm not going there just yet. Here's another one. 
kind of tucked off to the side. The underdark room. Oh, that's got to belong to the drow then. Of course it does. Let's open up. We don't need to really go in there, but for due diligence, we'll go inside. A 29. Thank you again, Asterion. Let's open up. That's very cool. I've got to tell you, the overall aesthetic, it's pleasant. I would rent it out myself. I like it. <laughs> it takes all really the beautiful parts of the Underdark and puts them here. Without the potential threat of dying from spores or whatever else. Let's go upstairs and we're going to go talk to the devil. As we often do. The door is not locked. You must hear me, devil. I will do whatever it takes. Give you anything you ask. There is only one thing in this world that I desire. You do not have it. And you never will. The Kithrak? What deal would he make with this devil? You must help me, Raphael. For the sake of my people. Hush now, Vos. These guests may not know it yet. But they want the same thing that you do. And unlike you, they have something of value to offer in return. Lazel, Talak Magir. The devil holds the key to freeing the Gith people. Right here, right now. You could seal our fate. Whatever you discuss with this devil, I must hear of it. Find me below in the tap room, once you're loosed from his claws. I'm glad you came. Not to my door. Not yet. But to the final reckoning. One more thing before we begin, though. It's quiet like white noise. For the first time since the Nautiloid, your mind is clear. It's unsettling. That does feel weird. I feel empty. What did you do? I gave you back your privacy by shutting that illithid in your pocket out of your mind. It can't hear us. Then speak freely. Tell me why you brought me here. I brought you here because I'm true to my word, and I can make all of this tadpole business go away. Which means you and your lovely friends can remain blessedly free of tentacles. Let us speak plain. I'll admit, you've impressed me. I wasn't sure you'd make it this far. But no matter how far you come, you're still on the road to ruin. A road that leads directly to a confrontation with the Elder Brain. At best, it will kill you and everyone else in this city. At worst, it will assimilate you and you won't have enough free will left to even wish you were dead. You have the key to destroying it in the palm of your hand, though. Your words might work on anyone else, but imagine speaking to a pillar and telling it, no, you should not support the home. It won't work on Edrahill. I know, I've got Orpheus in my hand. Very perceptive. Yes. I can give you the means to break him free. Speak, devil. We're listening. Yeah, go on. The Orphic Hammer. An artifact capable of shattering the chains that hold Prince Orpheus is held securely in my House of Hope 
even now. You could give it to me, but we know he's not going to do that. It's very convenient that you have exactly what I need. Isn't it just? And it's even more convenient that you can give me exactly what I want in return. What are you hoping to get out of everything here? Power. You free Orpheus, and in doing so, save the city, the Sword Coast, perhaps the whole world, and your own precious skin, too. And you give me the crown that dominates the Elder Brain. And you, Lazel of Kalir, want to free the Forgotten Prince, do you not? I want nothing more. Then it is settled, is it not? A crown for a hammer. A bargain of a lifetime, Lazel of Kalir. Oh, I bet. But, tell me why you're so eager to get a hold of the crown. I have craved it ever since the Archwizard Cassus created it, long centuries ago, and brought doom to the Empire of Netheril. That was the great age of humanity, and Netheril's flying sky cities were the apex of civilization. I was there the day it all fell apart. Entire cities, plummeted from the sky like angels with broken wings. The screams, oh, the screams. Hundreds of thousands of people watching in horror as the ground came up to meet them. <laughs> it was not a happy meeting. And Cassus was responsible. Not driven by malice, but by ambition. He forged a crown imbued with all the powers of magic. A crown that would make any who wore it a god. Men cannot contain so much power. The crown destroyed its creator, and his empire fell with him. Cassus's folly, the bards and scholars call it. I call it hope. The hope of creating a better world and the perils of unchecked hubris. I knew then that the folly of mortals could be the triumph of devils, and that I could use that crown to unite the Nine under one Archdevil Supreme, me. That's a lot. The idea of you ruling all Nine Hells doesn't really fill me with joy. The Hells require order to function. It is what separates us from mortals and demons. With the crown, I would impose perfect order, unity, efficiency, control. My kingdom would control its borders and stay within them. Where has the crown been? Hidden. The archdevil Mephistopheles snatched up the crown and squirreled it away in one of his vaults. He is not more than a frigid archivist. So much power and potential kept inert. He made a miracle into a museum piece. I raged. But only for a decade or so. Then I waited ever watching for more than a thousand years for a mistake, a mishap, a misadventure. And these chosen, who have caused you so much trouble accidentally, did me a favor. They brought the crown back into play. That's a lot. It must really annoy you that some mortals managed to steal the crown when you couldn't. Yes, it does. Especially when I see what a bloody mess they've made of their whole scheme. They must have raided Mephistopheles' vault. Impressive, I must admit. But they'll be dead soon. If you don't kill them, the Elder Brain will. It doesn't have feelings in the way you'd understand them. <laughs> 
but it seems rather angry. It is inevitable. When you destroy the brain, and you will because you must, the crown will be yours for the taking. And when that moment comes, you give the crown to me. In exchange, I give you the hammer now. A simple transaction, it seems, but it's more than that. He's offering you an alternative to the mind flare in your head. Take Raphael's deal and you could free Orpheus. With Orpheus free, you would have no need to rely on the Emperor. But there's no guarantee that Orpheus would be on your side. And if you take the deal, you'll have to fulfill it. You'll have to deliver the crown of Carsus to the devil himself. He claims his ambition is to unite the Hells, but can he be trusted to stop there? Do you trust him more than you trust the Emperor? Skvar! We should do as the Devil asks. The Prince of the Comet must rise again. I'm not going to agree. I can't do that. I would rather destroy the crown than risk it falling into the wrong hands again. How short-sighted. Much better to put it into the right hands. Hands that will ensure it is removed from this world. And it's the only way you can ensure that you remain part of this world. No, I'm not doing it. I'm leaving. I won't stop you. But time is running out. So, don't stay away for long. If you see reason, I'll be here, waiting, right up to the moment the world ends. Good to know. Let's talk to Lazel. The means to loosing the Prince of the Comet was within our grasp, and you refused it. Why? I sure did, Lazel. Because we don't need the deal. We can take the hammer from the House of Hope. I wanted to follow the open valley, the easy way out. You chose the bramble path. I'm annoyed by it. And I admire you for it. We must speak with Voss. Then we find our way to Raphael's House of Hope. We'll take the Orphic Hammer and use it to smash the true heir's bonds. Yisk Githgar Tafki crash it. The Githyanki will be free. I like how every time we talk to her, there's a little language lesson involved too. It's never just a conversation. She's like, here, hold up. Let me tell you about the way that we communicate. I like it. Let's go talk to these two villains. There you are. I thought I'd lost you. Something was blocking me from hearing your thoughts. And it was great. It was just incredible to not have you there. I wish you could be gone. But I'm not going to lie to him. He's in my head. He'll find out. It was Raphael. Raphael? Well, thank you for your honesty. Of course, I should have known the devil would come sniffing. The stench of impending chaos is irresistible to them. And what did he want with you? Oh, you're going to love what I share with you now, buddy. He knows how to free Orpheus. How interesting. No doubt he impressed upon you the need to do so. And what did he want in return for this knowledge? Right. The crown that the brain is wearing. Giving a devil what he wants sounds like a brilliant idea. Tell me, you turned him down. I did, sure. Good. I am glad. But be careful. The devil is like a cockroach. No matter what you do to it, it will always come back. I doubt this will be the last time you are approached. I trust that you will continue to remember who is really on your side. Without my protection, you cannot defeat the Elder Brain. You cannot even get close to it, no matter what the devil whispers in your ear. Really now, who is at my side? Lazel, Jahira, Asterion, not you. You're annoying. 
Speaking of a cockroach. We'll go back downstairs. We'll talk to those two villains. Then, actually, we'll also go talk to Voss as well. We've got to. After that, I'll probably let Asterion stay home at camp. We'll bring out... Why not Will? Sure. The two men bark softly to each other. A single name reaches your ears. Nine Fingers. It's a name you know. Nine Fingers is the head of the guild, a criminal organization operating inside Baldur's Gate. That's right. I'm going to listen in. A DC of 15, I do have advantage, but we'll see what happens. Thankfully, I've also got Rapture. A 19, we did it. Thank you, Rapture. You rats with the guild now. Her nine fingers met a match. The new kingpin? All meat and muscle, that one. And wild as a werebear. If he's looking to house nine fingers, my blade's got his back. Sounds messy as the ninth hell. Must be why she called us to help. Is that right? The way I heard it, you Zent cut a deal with the new... Hold on. You there! Getting up in our affairs! I am. I'm going to try to convince them to allow me to, of course, talk to them. Sounds like an interesting business. I would like to take part. A DC of 18. We've got persuasion proficiency and also rapture. Not to mention friends for an advantage bonus. A 24, we did it! Look, this subject's not safe. You selling your services, beat feet to the guild hall. Lower city, Basilisk Gate, guild hall. And that's all you're getting from me. Now scram! The chat's officially closed. Okay, thank you. Now I know a lot more than I did. Before we talk to Voss, let's talk to Carilla. Isn't right. Damn, Hoots! That new batch burns stronger than a pit fiend's fist. I'll take that as a compliment. Take it however you want. But I'll be having my usual from now on. Oi! You must have slipped by me earlier. Raphael's very disappointed you turned him down. Oh, I bet he is. I remember we've run into her many times. I wonder when we've missed her. She would show up, then she would vanish. Who are you exactly? Ah, oh, I forget we've never met. I've had my eyes and ears on you so long we feel like old friends. Carilla is my name. I'm Raphael's assistant, shall we say. He's gutted, you know. Had such high hopes for you. Oh, I bet he did. He better get used to disappointment. I'm not making any deal with him. You won't come out of this alive without him. The boss might be a devil, but he'll treat you more honestly than anyone else in the city. You know, I actually believe that. What exactly is it you do for him? Plenty. But right now, I have one job. You. I'm talking to you openly. Mortal to mortal. And I'm begging you to sign the contract. If the brain wins, the Illithid Empire returns and worlds you've never even dreamed of will die. Raphael can stop it. He wants to. And he knows how. You're the key. You always have been. She's making a much better case than he ever did. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. Why would he make demands of me instead of just helping? He's a devil. It's his nature. He needs to get his due. Oh, I bet. I'm going to stop the brain without his help. I doubt it. But even if you do, you won't survive the fight. I'd reconsider if I were you. Thankfully, you're not me. You're not me, and we're going to be okay. Don't waste the stuff. All right, boss. Let's tell you what happened. Voss, friend to the Comet. Lazel of Kalir, warrior of warriors. Tell me you took the Devil's deal. Tell me you will free Gith's heir. I'm not gonna lie to him. 
I'm not interested in pacting with devils, Voss. Skaketh! Orpheus will be free. There is no cost too high to unshackle my people. <laughs> okay, look here. I'm not your people for one. And two, you want me to do something that you cannot. That's a bit much. Raphael wants a powerful crown and trade. Who knows what chaos he might sow. No more than Vlakith will sow in Tunarath and beyond. No more than the Geich will sow across every plain. There is nothing I won't do, nothing I won't give to free Orpheus from the prison. The marks I bear are proof enough of that. But you, you are the one who carries the astral prism. You are the one who must free the prince. Find a way to retrieve the hammer and free Orpheus from the prism. I will assemble his remaining honor guard and plan our next actions. Together, we will yet free the true heir of Gith's blessed empire. He will free us from Vlakith and lead our Kithraki against the Geich. Iztik, I will wait in the underground. Seek me when you have the hammer in hand. I'll do that. But Orpheus sensed the tadpole before, and his guard attacked. Won't he attack if we free him? The Prince of the Comet aches for Gith Yankee liberation more than he abhors Geich. He might seethe when you free him. He might gnash his teeth and slander your name, but he will see reason. I promise you. Any idea where Raphael might keep the hammer? A devil of Raphael's stature does not simply make camp on the shores of the Styx. He will have made a sanctuary for himself, a lavish one too, one that caters to his many vices. The House of Hope. We must find a way in. The House of Hope, you say? I couldn't ask for a name more fitting. Every house has an entrance, Istik. Even those in the Hells. You must find it. Sure. We're going to. You are wasting your time. And mine. Our true enemy is the Elder Brain. Focus your mind there. I know how to juggle. I can do many things at once. I don't need you to tell me that. We are done here, finally. We'll go back to camp. We're going to let Will join us. Asterion will take a break. Then we'll move on. Yeah, after that, we just need to move up north. Just a little bit. Come on, Will. Get ready. Men, women, children, all barred from entry. A damn travesty. A decade ago, Baldur's Gate would have welcomed any and everyone seeking refuge. Who would take in these souls, if not the Jewel of Baldurin? Notice how he always talks about how great the city is. It lets you know what type of life he led. For the commoner, that wouldn't be shared. I could use my background. Baldur's Gate was a safe refuge when I left it. That's got to be Gortash's doing. Maybe. As long as Gortash is in charge, they'll be left shivering at the gates. All part of the plan, of course. Step one, create an army and order it to march on the city. Step two, shut the gates in the name of security. Step three, bask in the applause. Gortash hasn't made Baldur's Gate safe. He's made it a prison. And when his army breaks through, the people will have nowhere to run. To make this city a safe haven, we'll need to bathe Gortash and his allies in their own blood. I got you. Could it be true? Duke still mean allied with the Emperor. Mind flayers are like devils. They just sport tentacles rather than wings. Clever, manipulative, exploitative. The Emperor says he's a friend. I think we'd be fools to believe him. And maybe it's true. Maybe Stelmane allied with a Mind Flayer and subjected the city to their political will. Or maybe he made an offer she couldn't refuse. I like how Will can't handle Mazura, but here he's actually showing he has an apt mind for what's going on. Did you know Stelmane very well back in the day? I met her twice. The first time I was a boy of seven or eight at a banquet in the Flaming Fist's honor. One look and I was smitten. Chestnut hair that flowed behind her like willow fronds as she floated from one room to the next as if carried by clouds. The second time, Stelmane was different. 
even with the aid of a cane. Each step she took was a struggle. Every word she spoke took great physical effort. A stroke victim? I asked Father later. No, he said. A stroke survivor. You sense uncertainty in Will's voice. He questions his father's explanation. Yeah, that is very strange. I feel like there's something more to the story. A DC of 15. We'll add friends to it. We made it. A 15. Mm, something's always gnawed at me. At the banquet, Stelmay didn't seem to look at us, but through us. But that second time, her gaze never left me. It was steel, sharp and unyielding. It could just be my imagination, but I always felt that it was more than a stroke that had changed her. What, though? I couldn't say. Interesting. The Emperor did mention nothing about that. How strange. If Stelmane was suffering, maybe death was a blessing. I wouldn't say that, no. Gone before her time, it sounds like. What a tragedy. Not a tragedy. A calculated cruelty. Think about it. My father was tadpole. Stelmane is dead. The people are frightened and the council's in disarray. To exert control, you must first sow chaos. A tyrant strategy, as father would say. These murders aren't random acts. Someone powerful is guiding the killer's hand and the city is made weaker for it. No kidding, your father hasn't been gone for too long of a time and think about what the members of his mercenary group have been like. They were there from before the time that he was gone. That tells me a bit about them. And right now, I would like for you to join me. We're going to Baldur's Gate. That's the spirit. We're finally back and there's so much chatter. I wonder what I'm gonna miss. I'll try to listen carefully where I'm able to. Finally get to move on though, that feels good. We'll go up then. We're going to handle her business before we do anything else. Here we are, I believe. A hero is nothing without the right equipment. See Danthelon's dancing axe for all your adventuring needs. Sure. There's two half orcs inside. To Danthelon's dancing axe. Our stock isn't used. It's tried and tested by the finest adventurers. Oh, I bet it is. It's a pretty large shop. Let's go say hello to Dantalon. Greetings, sir. Your noble bearing brings a little class to my humble... <clears throat> oh, you can turn off the charm, Antharl. He's with me. Blueberries. Thought I had a sale. You look tired, Harper. I missed you too. They're already here? Down below. Here's the key. Well, thank you. I do like how he doesn't have a neck. If he pays me, I could go on a quest to find it. Do Harpers ever just stop and say hello? Ha! Clearly you do not know our Harper most high. I wouldn't say that. We've traveled a long road together in a short time. The others will be taking their ease here. Entharl has been known to shelter Harpers when they need it. Entharl has been known to charge rent. Harpers have been known to ignore him. Now go on. The short father may send me an actual paying customer today. I'm going, I'm going. I'm going to have a look at his stock later on, but not yet. I'm sure he has many good items. You're on the door till our friends are done. God forbid we do any business today. Poor guy. Alright, so we're going in here then. And he said downstairs. Let's do that. And so down we go. Alright, how many are here? Only a few, not too many at all. Alright. Let's say hi. Hi, Harper. May Saluna's tears shine on this meeting. A very formal greeting, Geraldus. You are well? Yes, hi, Harper. Standing beneath Saluna's tears. The lad's a little nervous, Jahira. 
We heard of your great victory against Ketherick. Geraldus isn't nervous. He's terrified. And he's using Salunas' tears as some kind of code. I understand, Geraldus. Take a moment. And you, Harper. Mm. There is something familiar about you. Doesn't she remind you of our old friend Marcus? Jahira's meaning is clear. Marcus was a traitor laying a trap. The same, it seems, is happening here. We're going to strike while Jahira has him all distracted. We know what's going on. Time for a battle. There's only one Harper present who's actually a Harper. That's good to know. Lazel, you're going to move in first. You'll go after... Yeah, that one. That little Harper. Strike now. Good job. Again. 13 HP. A bonus attack. She hits hard. A doppelganger. I'm not surprised. I'll take your kill order. Thank you. I could use a key point, but it's not needed. They get to miss a turn. Andrew Hill, it's your turn. You'll jump up. Yeah, do that for me. Strike at another one. Goodbye, supposed Harper. One attack. Another. 20 HP. He's not dead, not yet. The Hunter's Mark. Now he's shooting. It missed. Another shot. Nine damage. No wonder they need us. Jahira, it's your turn. You'll go after the Harper to your left. Strike now. Keep it standard. Nearly dead. Strike again. They're dead now. Good job. All right. After that, you're going to move over to your right. And your turn is over. Well, you could use Halo of Spores. But we don't want to hit any of our friends. I wonder if it would. We'll leave it alone. I've not used it before, so I need to understand how it fully functions. All right, well, let's have you move up too. You're going to use your blast. One, two, and three. All three hit. 37 HP. Nice work. You're done. Back over to Lazelle. She's going in to punch. One punch. Two punch. And it's over for them. We could always jump up, that's true, or climb up. We've got options. Let's do that. Oh, buddy, you're in danger. I've got a very deadly monk. They're dead. How many has she brought to Baal's side, I wonder? All of them, maybe? I don't know. How many more Harpers dead? No kidding. Are there any Harpers left? Here are some notes. The city's Harpers appear to operate independently, each separate cell feeding into a ranking member who oversees the larger network. It's an effective method, distributing their efforts and ensuring that each unit is safeguarded against the infiltration of the others. But once already compromised, this structure is their greatest weakness, with no individual Harper being able to tell where the contamination began and how far it has spread. And so while they scramble to rebuild themselves, we carry on with the Chosen's work. Tragic. They're not wrong. Those are very good notes. Let's talk to the only Harper remaining. Could he be the only one left in the entire city? I would hope not. Did I... Did I get it right? Shalunas tears. It is said no false face can stand beneath their light. An old code, Harper. But yes, you got it right. Now I need your report. We had eyes on suspected cultists in the city. Like you asked. We thought we were tracking them, but... They were tracking you instead. Evidently. Doppelgangers. And they're not just working with the cult, our high Harper. They're part of it. Balists, I think. Sworn to Orin the Red, yes. We've already had the pleasure. Go on. Everything seemed fine until your latest orders. 
until we started to search for the Rajima. They struck the same night. I woke to one of them strangling Chelvin, while smiling at me out of her face. She said, it said that I'd report back to you as normal. Lou, are you here? And I had no choice. I'm sure it felt that way, Geraldus. The others were likely dragged back to Orin. Tortured. Sacrificed. I do not expect you to die for me. But to risk Antharl, any citizen who might have wandered in, there is always a choice. And the Harper must be able to make the hard ones. Perhaps this isn't the life for you after all, Geraldus. No, Jahira! Hi, Harper! Please! I'm still a Harper. I want to help! You've scarcely signed up, boy. And there is a war coming. Why die a Harper when you could still live as anything else? He did a good job. He warned us. He stayed to fight. Everyone else is dead but him. He's a good kid. No one can make that choice for him. Not even you, High Harper. I want to fight. For Chelvin. For all of them. So it means something. Death is death. To look for meaning in it is foolishness, boy. Childish storybook nonsense. <laughs> exactly the kind the Harper would spout, I suppose. Fine. I have no right to make the choice for you. Not when this mess is of my making. I sent the Harpers hunting after the cult without thinking what it would mean to be hunted in turn. Now they are compromised. And if not for you, I wouldn't even know it. I'm sorry, Geraldus. Harper. And I owe you an apology as well. I haven't told you everything I hope to learn here today. First, Geraldus, you're the last Harper in the city I can rely on. Lay low and rest while you can. I have matters to discuss with my friend here. Until we know who the false facers are, we cannot trust anyone beyond ourselves. There is one person, Geraldus. Except him. Except Geraldus. It has been some time since anyone dared wrap my knuckles like you did. No less than I deserve. I have not been overly generous with the truth. I came here to learn of the Chosen. True enough. But I set my harper searching for someone else, too. Tell me, what do you know of a man named Minsk of Rashomon? The name is as familiar as Jahira's own. A hero of the Time of Troubles, who saved the city more than once. Oh, everyone knows about him. But few know of his fate, I think. I had hoped to keep it that way. Minsk is an old friend. Perhaps my oldest. We fought at one another's backs, times beyond counting. And the last time I saw him, I left him to die. What happened? Before we ever heard of this absolute, we received word of a gathering in the Undercity. What we found was the first dark seed of this plot. A circle of cultists with mind flares in their midst. We might have ended it there, cut off at the root, but before I could send for help, Minz charged in alone. It was chaos. He was overrun, dragged down beneath a mass of tentacles. I had a choice. Stay and let word of this cult die with us, or leave him and live to fight another day. He did charge in. That wasn't your fault at all. You were able to live and help us out. I'm sorry, Jahira. That's a very cruel choice to have to make. The world takes much from those who presume to defend it. But sometimes, you get to take it back. So don't be sorry, because I mean to use you, if you're willing. Infection, indoctrination, eradication. That has been the fate 
of everyone the cult has captured so far. But it has not been yours. With your help, perhaps it need not be Minsk's either. Yeah, maybe he's okay. We're going to find him. Let's find him. As simply as that? For no other reason than that I asked? <laughs> Perhaps you two will get along. Oh, the point is moot without the means to find him. Without the Harpers, we shall have to find another path. I'll have a better idea of what that is once we're through the gates. Seems I need to reacquaint myself with this damned city. We need to wash up too. We're gonna wash up. Then what we'll do, we'll head back out. There shouldn't be too much else to check out. We just need to move up north. There's probably a few shops, but who knows. And here's where we're going to call it right now. Later, we're going into the fortress. We're going to check out their prison. If I know anything about Gortash, is that anyone who's good, anyone who's worth their salt, they're going to be imprisoned. So we're going to check there. And after that, we finally get to move into the city proper. We're going to investigate, we're going to smite, it's what we do best, and we're going to try our best to save as many people as possible. Lazelle is going to be at camp, Carlac is going to join in, and as we go along, I'll continue to change people out here and there. Thank you for watching everyone, do leave a like and comment right down below, and also if you want to see certain builds, if you want to see certain characters in the group more often, let me know that as well. We're getting closer, we're inch by inch getting closer. Until then.